morning and welcome to Kids and Youth Check-In. It's 10 o'clock in the morning again. How does this keep on happening? It's so good to have you with us today. I've got a very special guest uh, and um, yeah, it's, it's going to be so much fun. Uh, I'm very excited and so uh, let's get ready. Here we go, Kids and Youth Check-In. It's weekly challenge time and as I said last week we are doing the quiz and so what we're going to do is I'm going to reveal the answers of last week's quiz. Now, I do have to apologise. There were a few BDI ones out there who noticed there were nine, not ten, um, of these um, of the pictures. So I'm going to give you um, an extra point. Uh, everybody just to start off with so that you definitely got one out of ten um, and what we want to do is um, I want to uh, I want you to be um, commenting or let me know throughout the week uh, use the uh, social media stuff uh, with your parents permission to let us know how well you've done and then next week I'm gonna have a leaderboard here and I'm gonna have people's names written on it and um, we will uh, then start to work out um, a little bit of a leaderboard to see who does the best and maybe quite maybe there will be a prize at the end. So here we go, here are last week's answers. Number one was, number two was, number three was, number four was, number five was, number six was, Seven was eight. What? And finally, number nine. Don't forget to send your answers uh, to us on social media, comment un under below, and we will make sure that we create our leaderboard. So looking forward to it. So here we go. Here are this week's silhouette characters. Can you guess which characters it is? Write down your answers and then keep them until next week. Here we go with this week's picture quiz. Today is Father's Day, and um, I'm aware that when we started Kids and Youth Check-In, um, we didn't um, say how incredible mums are. I know we did as a church, and mums, you are incredible. Um, you know, you do so many different things, and equally, dads, we want to say and honour you equally uh, today. And so, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to introduce you to our special guest today, and um, and you'll let's see where this conversation goes. I'm also going to challenge them in a little game. So, um, sit back and uh, enjoy this little interview. Uh, so, it's really exciting. It's um, it's special guest time, and um, I thought I'd bring a really special guest. Um, well, he means an awful lot to me anyway. Uh, uh, sir, who are you? I'm your father. Have you forgotten me? <laughs> you are my dad. Absolutely right. But you're not <laughs> Darth Vader, so that's okay. Um, and, um, like... How many years have you been a dad? Oh, I've been a dad uh, all your all your years. It's a good, um, well... It's a good vintage, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. So, um, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the challenge of all challenges, father versus son on Father's Day here at Check In. So, here we go. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, obviously, you know, I was um, the perfect child, Dad. You remember that, right? And there's been no embarrassing stories that you'd like to share with any of the members of our church. Um, but any stories that will help people kind of understand a little bit more of what Rick Otto was like as a kid, I'm sure they would love to know. Well, you took after me, probably educated you to have a little bit of a gung-ho approach to things. Yep. And uh, a little experiment here and there. Um, the, the fridge mine comes to mind as well. The uh, putting the skateboard and getting a fridge and sticking some eggs in the fridge and then hurtling that down a hill. <laughs> All for the good of children's work, you told me. <laughs> I was hanging onto the back with this rope trying to keep out of camera shot. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Absolutely brilliant. Um, <laughs> any other stories? Anything else apart from fridges down a hill? Oh, well. Well, um, because uh, before your brother arrived, there was only two short years with me on your own. Yeah. Um, you were a bit young to be doing things quite so uh, risque. So therefore, um, when we ever did things together, invariably your brother would be with us. So there was this occasion, probably be about nine years of age, I think, nine or yeah. ten. Your brother would be obviously two years younger. And um, we, or probably I, decided that it was time to make a kite. Brilliant. So we uh, got a couple of bamboo uh, poles, cut them to the right size, lashed them together. The uh, proverbial brown paper wrapped it all up. No doubt, did a bit of decoration somehow. Yeah, so I, I seem to remember we decorated it, yeah. A bit of string with uh, some bows on to give it a bit of a tail. Yeah. And then it was a case of, well, let's go and see if it will fly. You probably didn't think it would. <laughs> so off we go up to a nearby hill. Mm. And uh, it was a reasonable, well, it was a dry day, I know that. And, and I think there was a bit of a wind. And uh, sure enough, we had to do a one, two, three. I think you probably ran down the hill first, carrying the... Yeah. Yeah, uh, the I'd have done the running. I'd have done the yeah. running because Ali would have probably been stood there with the string. Like, let, let, that's probably what happened. <laughs> anyway, sure enough, the kite went up in the sky. Yeah. And it sailed about a little bit. But then the wind dropped. Yeah. And um, when that dropped, so did the kite. Exactly. Yeah. However, not to worry, there's plenty of space. But below me, it managed to land in the one and only central large bush of a tree. <laughs> it did. Now, we should say this is, I mean, it's not a massive hill, but it's a pretty big hill. There's lots of space. Like, it's the oh. type of place you go sledging, right? Oh, and, yeah. um, and there's nothing apart from this one big bush. And if, if it had fallen anywhere else, we'd have had hours of fun, right? But, but we still had hours of fun. We, well, yeah, because <laughs> what, what happened next? <laughs> well, it was obvious in order to recover the kite that we needed something long, probably a long pole or something, to be able to reach this. Because we couldn't get inside and climb up the tree no. Because it was just not made that way. Yeah. So, um, you used to watch a program called Thunderbirds. Yeah, I did, yeah. And that was, uh, they were called International Rescue. <laughs> so, uh, we then had to adopt the um, approach of being an international rescue to rescue the kite. Which it maintained that I had to then, and take the younger brother with you, didn't he? Down the hill, back home, to get a suitable implement. I mean, when you think about it now, like, you left me on a hill with a massive tree and a, a, and a kite that probably didn't really kind of have a massive monetary value to us. It was fun, but you left me with that on the hill, in the tree. You didn't leave me in the tree. And you went back home um, with, and, and, and what did you get in the end? 
I think it was along coal rather than ladders. I don't, I don't remember running up the back up the hill with some ladders. No, I don't think you did. But yeah, along coal. Um, it wasn't a clothes crop. I know that because we didn't have one of those. But uh, some something of suitable length anyway. Yeah. And then um, in we come, international rescue. Da, 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 da. And we recovered the kite! Yay! Hey. <laughs> oh, it was so good. Um, yeah, there were so many memories that, uh, that <laughs> when we talked about it in the past, so many different things come to mind. And yeah. I mean, and that's what I love about the fact that, um, you know, we get to do this stuff. We get to have giggles together. We get to cry together. We get to, we do fall out. We should say that. Um, we also have um, a bit of a phrase when we get together to do some DIY of one job leads to another. Um, and that sometimes might be our gung-ho approach. Other times it's definitely not our fault. It's other things that have already happened. Um, but um, dad, I want to say thank you for being a great dad. Uh, you love kids um, because you serve them the way that Jesus does. I still remember the day that uh, we were in that cattle shed with 600 boys and girls and their team and uh, we were just watching them worship God in an incredible way um, and yeah so thankful for you and love you to bits and happy Father's Day right? Thank you. It's all right and um, I think a present is on its way uh, we'll find out um, at some point but um, thanks for joining us today dad and um, I'll catch up soon. Thank you. God bless. Okay, so let's talk about Bible time. Get your Bible. Uh, it's Bible checking time and here we go. I'm going to stand up today just because I feel a little bit more energetic for some reason today. So, um, heroes, we're going to continue to look at heroes. And if you remember the story that my dad was telling about the kite and he, how we rescued it, how he managed to get that big pole and take it out of the... the the tree and actually in some respects my dad is a bit of a hero of mine um, and um, and they do save us like people who are heroes they save us from things let's be honest and then many times I'm sure my dad would be able to tell of times when he uh, rescued me from falling over or from doing this or doing that um, just one of those little stories was the was the kite now when we think about the Bible there are so many stories about when people were rescued when God rescued people and uh, obviously the biggest one is Jesus when he died and he rose again to save us to rescue us so we can have a relationship with God um, but what I want us to look at is uh, a couple of verses from Psalm 30 and um, this here they come here are the little verses for you to read I will exalt you Lord for you rescued me you refused to let my enemies triumph over me. O oh Lord, my God, I cried to you for help. You restored my health. You brought me up from the grave. O oh Lord, you kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts a moment, but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. That first verse says, I will exalt you. I will put you at the number one spot because you rescued me. When we think about our lives, God has rescued us. We might still get things wrong, but if we're trying to live the way that God wants us to live, because we know of his love for us, we're going to try and be the people that he's asked us to be. And he's rescued us from trying to do the things that weren't good for us. So by putting God number one, we're remembering what he has done for us. You know, he's saying here, the, the psalmist is saying, look, you refuse to let the ones who are against me beat me. You know, and in those times when I cried out to you, you were there and you helped me. You even kept me from falling into the pit of death. Wow, that's pretty scary, right? And then it goes on to talk about sing and about being joyful, even though at times it's 
heart. I want to think about one of the Bible characters um, that we've talked a lot about, but his name is Moses. Moses goes on an incredible journey. Check out Kids Life stuff uh, that Shannon and I did a number of weeks ago. But um, the main part of the rescuing is that God sends Moses in to speak to the most powerful person, Pharaoh. And he walks in and he says, let God's people go. And Pharaoh a number of times says, nope, 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 nope. Eventually, after God has sent many plagues and sadly sends a spirit that will uh, take out the firstborn children, Pharaoh eventually says, okay, go, I set you free. Moses is then the leader and he is leading all these people. And as they are approaching this massive big expanse of water, they turn around and they see that the Egypt, Egyptian army, sorry, is coming right to them. So what does Moses do? Sticks out a stick. Why? Because God says, I'm going to rescue you. Trust me, it's going to be okay. And so then the waters part and the Israelites storm through the, the water and it's a dry path and everything's incredible. Find it in Exodus. But God rescues his people and he uses Moses. Moses is an ordinary, everyday type of guy. Aside of him killing somebody, let's not do that. But this guy is like you and me, an everyday hero who is able to help in the rescuing of many. You and I can do that. It doesn't have to be that we hold a stick out. It doesn't have to be that we wear a cape. It doesn't have to be that we wear our pants on the outside of our jeans. What it means is us being willing to serve God to enable others to get to know who he is. That's it. So just like my dad rescued the kite so that we could go and play with it again. Know that you are rescued by God. And that we can sing for joy, even when it feels rubbish like it does at the moment. But also know that you can be part of, because God invites us in to that. Remember a couple of weeks ago, Tim and I were talking about, go, go out and make disciples. That's what Jesus is asking us to do, to help bring people into God's kingdom. It's up to them whether they do that, but we get to be the people who go and share all of this incredible stuff. So my challenge is, do you want to be a hero? Do you want to help rescue people? I know I do. Because I know that in times when it's hard, it can feel rubbish. But I do know that that verse in Psalm 30, joy comes in the morning. God will always bring about good stuff, good things for those who choose to follow him. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for um, your love for us. Thank you that you sent Jesus to rescue us. And Lord, I pray that you will help us to be people who show you to other people so they too can be rescued. Thank you for Psalm 30. Thank you for the way that it speaks to us today. And that may we be like Moses to trust you so we can help to rescue others. In your name. Amen. Sadly, that's the end of Kids and Youth Check-In. I'm sorry. Uh, that's kind of how it goes, isn't it? Some things start and then they end. Uh, but um, don't worry, we're going to be back next week. How did you do in the picture quiz this week? How did you do last week? We're going to start our leaderboard. Do not forget. And also, um, kind of just have a great week of just being you. Do you know what I mean? And remember that you are rescued by Jesus. Through all that God did through Jesus, you are rescued and have a relationship with God. How incredible is that? Have a great week and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bless you guys. Bye.